in the past, when we had to do it, the American people have always found a way to do it. You look at some of the challenges that we've overcome in the past, whether they're civil wars or world wars or great depressions or all the different journeys that America has made to make us a not perfect but more perfect union. And you've got to think that if we're true to our character and we vote our values and we ultimately say, look, we're just not going to support people who are brain dead partisans or inflexible ideologues. We're going to support people who are Americans first. We can correct this system. It's ultimately up to us. That's the good news. But it is up to us. And so we've got to take this political process back from uh, the two extremes. The American people really want us to take a more pragmatic approach to the enormous problems we face huge issues that can only be tackled by people being willing to listen to one another and to work together. I think the genius of our system was the founding father set up a system of government that was slightly dysfunctional. Independent House, independent Senate, independent president. If anything was going to get done, folks had to work together. And so this notion that you shouldn't find common ground, that doesn't mean sacrifice your principles, but you shouldn't find common ground, is the antithesis of everything America has been about. And if somebody wants to say my way or the highway after every election, there are other legitimate forms of government. A parliamentary system works pretty well for the UK or works for Canada, but it sure as heck is not the American form of government, which with its checks and balances and with its need for compromise. In politics, there are no right answers. Only a continuing flow of compromises among groups resulting in a changing, cloudy, and ambiguous series of public decisions where appetite and ambition compete openly with knowledge and wisdom. That's all there is. You know, it's easy to blame the media, it's easy to blame big money, it's easy to blame specific politicians, and they all deserve some blame, but we never seem to get around to blaming ourselves. After all, we do elect these people. Thomas Jefferson once said, if a nation expects to be both ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. And to me, that's the heart of the solution. The better educated people are about politics and government, the more likely they are to make responsible choices. And that's where I think we've fallen tremendously short. In many schools, uh, civics isn't even taught anymore. You have to understand how the government works so that you can know how to influence it. You have to study what ideology is before you can pick one. And you have to understand where the candidates stand in order to know that you're making an informed choice when you go to the ballot box. If I expect the right things to happen the way mushrooms just naturally grow, if they get the right amount of moisture, uh, no, I don't, I don't think that will happen. I think it will take all of us deciding it is very important to solve these problems and that it requires time, effort, and sacrifice by all of us, not by that group over there and those individuals over there, but by all of us. Has to include all of us. If it doesn't, it won't work. That's as optimistic as I can get for you. Funding for Out of Order was provided by RFI Foundation, Inc. Neil C. and Judy F. Bicknell. J. Thornton Kirby. Richard J. and Ellen G. Bodorf Charitable Foundation, Inc. <laughs>